Okay, logical implications uh, further. Could this have anything to do with UFOs? Well, I don't know for sure because I'm not a UFOologist. I don't follow it. I'm not real interested in it. Um, I really don't care a whole lot about UFOs one way or another. But it occurs to me that many of these UFO experiences could be explained as experiences of consciousness in a different reality frame. You can parallel process reality frames very easily. You can be in two or three realities at the same time. You just learn to parallel process. I mean, we parallel process a lot. You ever seen a secretary typing, talking on the phone, and talking to somebody else all at the same time? You know, she's just learned to parallel process. And she's writing notes, you know, about something else all going on at once. You just parallel process. You have several things going on at the same time. Well, somebody who just naturally gets into these other frames, and it happens. I mean, you can learn to do it whenever you want to. But sometimes it just happens to people, like it happened to Bob Monroe that he had these out-of-bodies. You know, he didn't want to do it, he didn't train to do it, it happened. People have all kinds of paranormal experiences, if this just happens to them, that's because sometimes their, their mind gets just in that frame where it makes a connection for some reason, and they have that experience. Well, if you happen to be in this reality frame, and you see some other part of some other reality frame, how can you tell them apart? Data's data. It all just looks physical. And if you don't know anything about what I've just been telling you about, you just assume that that's part of this physical reality. So you see these people, you interact with them, and they're here. Well, they're not really here. They're in another reality frame. They just appear to be here because you can't separate one frame from another because you really don't know what you're doing enough to be able to make that separation. So I think that's what's going on a lot of times. And that doesn't explain everything you know, that the UFO folks say and do, but it should explain a whole lot of of what they uh, experience. Okay. Simultaneously being in parallel reality frames, is, uh, it happens a lot and you can learn to do it when you want to. Okay, question, uh, flaws in the big toe. Have we found anything yet that it doesn't explain? Um, not yet. We're looking because these things are important. If you find something that doesn't explain, it explains the physics, it explains the paranormal, it even explains theology. And by that I don't mean it explains every detail in someone's theology. I mean if you look at the fundamental things, the fundamental questions, those things that are, are, that are functions of the, the nature of fundamental reality, that's what it explains. It explains all the fundamental questions. Okay, if you find things that it doesn't explain, then Terrific. That means there's more exploration needs to be done, more data needs to be taken, and uh, we have to enlarge the theory. If the theory just doesn't and can't be enlarged to explain it, then that means the theory is incomplete, that there's a bigger theory. And we're open to all of that. It just, uh, you know, we're looking. We're looking to find holes. Have not found any yet. All right. Question. What can an aware consciousness do? Answer. What can it do? You are consciousness. You are part of a consciousness system. There's very little that you can't do. There will be some things that you don't have access to, like in those future probability states. You won't get access to those states. You'll be kept from some of them if it's determined that that would, re, that would increase your entropy rather than reduce it. If it turns out that that's not on your path to growth, to dropping fear, dropping ego, then it's a good chance that you won't get there. You'll be, you know, like most computer systems, you'll get to that little thing where we go beep, you know, access denied. It's that sort of thing. Um, but there is a whole lot that you can do. And as it helps your learning, you know, there's no, there's no barriers at all. But you wouldn't want a system that provided you with the tools to, uh, you know, defeat your own intended progress. So the system is trying to help you out there with its access. Can everybody do it? Well, of course everybody can do it. Everybody who's conscious. Anybody in here who's not conscious? Well, all of us can do it then. Okay, we can all do it. There are no lawyers? <laughs> okay, but everybody doesn't do it. Why not? Sounds like fun, doesn't it? Everybody doesn't do it. Well, everybody could, you know, play the piano in a concert. Everybody could be a brain surgeon or a nuclear physicist, you know, and everybody could do any of those things. But most of us don't do those things because we're not interested. It wasn't what came up when we were, needed something to come up and do. 
you know, uh, we don't have the time, we don't have the energy, you know, it's just all kinds of reasons. And those are exact same reasons that everybody doesn't do this. They're not interested, you know, they don't have time, it just doesn't come up. So it's, everybody can do it, but that's theoretical in the sense. Everybody theoretically can do it, but very few people really will. Um, you can do it, though. It's your right as consciousness to, uh, to learn these things. How do you do it? Well, people ask me that a lot, and the first thing I generally tell them is, if you want to understand consciousness, understand your own consciousness first. Don't worry about anybody else's consciousness. You might think that's more fun, but it's, it's going to be less productive for your learning. Understand your own consciousness. I have a very long section in, uh, in the book one that talks about meditation, how to do it, gives you a lot of examples and, and things. Uh, but meditation is not nearly so hard as you think. It's not nearly as difficult or painful as you think. It's really a very simple thing. You just have to stick with it and practice it and always collect evidential data. If you don't collect evidential data, you won't know what you're doing. It'll just be, well, is this real? Well, I don't know. But it's fun, so let's do it some more. But that's, that's rewarding in itself, but it doesn't get you anywhere in the long term. So while you're doing things, you have to always say, what can I do that produces some evidence I can follow up on? If you're right, let's say 70% of the time, or even 50% of the time, okay? Find out what, what state were you in, what approach did you have when you were right that was different than when you weren't. And you will find that by practice and practice, you'll be able to refine what you're doing, how you're thinking, how you define your intent, and you'll get better and better at it. It just goes little tiny increments at a time. It's not a great leap. It's a, it's a lot of work. Collecting evidential data, that's important. There's no shortcuts. You can't take any magic pills. You can't read any magic books. You can't uh, hang out with any great gurus. It's not going to help you. You can do all those things, but it's not going to make you grow even a little bit. Growth has to be from the inside. Growth cannot be pushed on you from the outside. If you're not ready, if you don't take the step, it won't happen. Okay, approach to meditation. Look at the things that are orange there in this, in this chart. Notice, fear nothing, hope for nothing, no analysis, expect nothing, don't compare, don't judge. They're all about things not to do. They're not about things to do. Everyone can meditate naturally. You don't have to learn to meditate. What you have to learn to do is to stop doing the stuff that blocks meditation. Meditation's natural to all of us. It's like breathing. You don't have to really even think about it. You just do it. Your consciousness, but you have to stop blocking doing it. And you block it with your fear, you block it with your expectations, you block it when you constantly want to make it objective and you want to analyze it all the time. Well, what was that? And what did that mean? Was that real? And you get in there jabbering like that. It ruins your meditation. You can't do that. Just experience it. Be a scientist. Just do it and observe. Don't have any expectations about it. Don't be trying to go somewhere with it. Just observe. Okay. Now, this is where I was when I went out to Bob Monroe's. It's where you are now. You know, when I went out to Bob Monroe's, my, my thoughts were, you know, is this guy nuts or what? Well, you have to be thinking that about me now because unless you have extensive experience with the larger consciousness system,